Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. My name is Mariana Kiel, I am a Senior Application Scientist at Broch Sequencing and Life Science, and today I will present data from a single-day hybridization-based capture workflow using the Kappa target enrichment probes. I am going to start reviewing the basic steps of target enrichment workflows, including the Kappa HyperCap workflow V3. Then, I will present sequencing data for libraries prepared under a range of hybridization times using enzymatically fragmented DNA, followed by data from libraries prepared with mechanically fragmented DNA. And finally, I will discuss the performance of the Kappa HyperCap workflow V3 compared to a market equivalent kit for whole exome sequencing using reduced hybridization times. Target enrichment technologies rely on enrichment of specific genomic regions prior to sequencing, providing cost-effective solutions for identification of genetic variants as compared to whole genome sequencing. Standard hybridization-based target enrichment workflows usually comprise the following steps. First, the DNA is sheared, which can be performed either enzymatically or mechanically, and converted into sequencing libraries. Then, biotinylated probes hybridize to re the regions of interest and strap targeting beads are used to capture the target fragments. Post-capture libraries are amplified and purified and then are ready for quality and quantity assessment and sequencing. The duration of a standard workflow from fragmentation of the DNA sample to amplification and cleanup of enriched libraries is over 20 hours. Typically, libraries are prepared in the day one, probes hybridization spans overnight, and the remaining steps are performed in the day two. The major obstacle in the development of a single-day target enrichment protocol has been the 16 to 20 hours hybridization step. If the target enrichment workflow could be performed in a single day, how do you think your lab's productivity could be increased? Maybe you could process more samples per week, or you could have a more flexibility on your schedule, for example. However, can we reduce the hybridization step from 16 hours to less than one hour without significantly compromising performance? To address this question, we tested shorter hybridization times on libraries prepared with the Kappa HyperCap workflow V3 which is a streamlined NGS target enrichment solution, compatible with enzymatic or mechanical DNA fragmentation using the Kappa Hyper Plus or Kappa Hyper Prep kit. In this study, 100 nanograms of human genomic DNA was input into library preparation using both methods for DNA fragmentation. Then, Kappa Universe adapters were used during ligation, and Kappa Unique Dual Index Primers were used for pre-capture amplification and indexing, which are designed to ensure high library construction efficiency and low adapter dimer formation. Target enrichment was performed with one microgram of individual or single-plex libraries using the Kappa HyperExome probes, which is a 43 megabase human uh, whole exome panel that interrogates exonic regions defined by the CCDS, RepSeq, Ensemble, GenCode, and CleanVar databases, including medically relevant variants. Then, post-capture libraries were amplified by ligation-mediated PCR, quantified and sequenced on an XSeq platform at 75 base pairs, paired and read length. All the above steps were perform performed according to the Kappa HyperCap workflow V3 instructions, without any modification in the kit's components or volumes, with exception of the hybridization times, where the performance of libraries hybridized for 15 minutes, 1 or 1.5 one hours, and 4 hours were compared to the standard 16 hours hybridization. Libraries were prepared in triplicates for each hybridization time. I am going to discuss first the performance of shorter hybridization times on libraries generated from enzymatically fragmented DNA. The quantity and quality of libraries were assessed before and after target enrichment. In dark blue are shown the 15 minutes hybridization libraries, in light blue are the 1.5 hour hybridization, 
in gray, 4 hours, and in yellow, the standard 16 hours hybridization. The concentration of pre-capture libraries generated from 100 nanograms of initial DNA input was measured by qubit. All libraries showed consistent yields across replicates in the range expected for the Kappa Hyper Plus kit and exceeded the minimum required amount for target enrichment, that is 1 microgram. On the right panel is the concentration of post-capture libraries measured by qPCR. Here we can see that the post-capture yields are significantly impacted by the hybridization time, decreasing from 70.3 nanomolar in average for the overnight libraries to 3.2 nanomolar for sample ha samples hybridized for 15 minutes. However, despite this considerable decrease on post-capture concentration, even the 15 minutes libraries showed sufficient concentration to proceed to sequencing. Then we compared libraries generated with each hybridization time across some important sequencing metrics. In the panel A, we show that the mean coverage over the entire target region was very consistent for samples hybridized from 1.5 to 16 hours, ranging from 102 to 112 X on average. The 15 minutes hybridization showed a relatively higher impact on mean coverage, decreasing it to around 80 X. Panel B shows the percent of target base covered at particular depths for each hybridization time at 135 million total reads per sample. At a depth of coverage of at least 30x, samples hybridized for 16 hours, 4 hours and 1.5 hours showed very similar percentage of target base covered. And as we look at deeper sequencing at 50x or 100x depths, more pronounced is the impact of 15 minutes hybridization, while the 1.5 and 4 hours hybridization remain more similar to the 16 hours. The overall efficiency of target sequencing is described by the on target rate and the coverage uniformity, expressed here as fold 80 base penalty. The on target rate describes the percentage of reads that maps to the target region. The fold 80 base penalty, on the other hand, is a metric for uniformity and is the fold of additional sequencing required to ensure that 80% of the target bases achieve the mean coverage. All four hybridization conditions tested in this study yielded a similar percentage of reads on target and similar fold 80 base penalty as shown in the panels A and B. The level of PCR duplicates in sequencing data indicates library complexity, with uh, low uh, values indicating greater complexity. In contrast to on-target rate and coverage uniformity, you can see in the panel C that reduced hybridization times resulted in higher impact on the percent of PCR duplicates, reflecting decreased library complexity in these shorter protocols. We also examined whether shorter hybridization uh, increased the GC bias. Here we show a GC bias distribution plot, which provides a visual representation of the coverage uniformity. GC bias describes the relationship between the actual GC content of a target region and the read coverage across that region. When all regions are equally represented, regardless of GC content, then the normalized coverage across all regions is 1, represented by the dashed line in this chart. When GC poor or GC rich regions are under or over represented in the sequencing data, then the normalized coverage is greater or lower than 1. The shaded area in this plot represents the GC content distribution uh, of a 100 base pairs window in the target region and each solid line represents the average of normalized coverage across GC bins for triplicate libraries. The Kappa HyperCap workflow yielded highly uniform enriched libraries with minimal GC bias irrespective of the duration of the hybridization step. The normalized coverage of libraries prepared with hybridization as short as 15 minutes was very similar to the standard 16 hours hybridization over the entire target region. 
In the following slides, I'm going to show the performance of shorter hybridization times for libraries prepared with mechanically fragmented DNA. These results uh, are published in a technical note that can be requested to our technical support team. The experimental design of this assessment was very similar to the previous one, except for the DNA fragmentation method, where an ultrasound indicator was used to mechanically shear the standard human genomic DNA. In addition, the hybridization step was performed for 15 minutes, one hour instead of the one and a half hours as in the previous data I have presented, four hours and 16 hours. In this assessment, data was downsampled uh, to 50x uh, raw coverage. The overall results are concordant with the enzymatic fragmentation data. The mean coverage over the, over the entire target region was consistent across all hybridization times, with slightly lower coverage on libraries hybridized for 15 minutes. Shorter hybridization times resulted in reduced percent of target bases covered at 20 and 30x, but similar coverage at 50x. Regarding to capture efficiency, these libraries also showed similar percent of on-target reads above 70% for all hybridization times, including 15 minutes. The fault 80 base penalty on panel B and GC bias results on panel D combined demonstrate that the libraries are highly uniform across all hybridization times. The percent of PCR duplicates shown in the panel C is the sequencing metric most affected by the reduction of hybridization time. As the hybridization duration decreases, the percent of duplicates increases, generating less complex libraries. However, a 5 to 10% uh, of duplication rates is still acceptable for most whole exome sequencing applications. After obtaining high quality sequencing data from libraries prepared with a range of hybridization times, using different methods for DNA fragmentation, we compared the perf performance of the Kappa HyperCap workflow with, with a market equivalent kit using exome panels. We followed the Kappa HyperCap V3 and the supplier X instructions to generate triplicate libraries for each hybridization time point tested in this assessment. Both workflows utilize enzymatic fragmentation of input DNA, universal or stubby adapters, and unique dual index primers. Exon panels with a similar capture size were used for both workflows. Kappa's protocol has some advantage uh, over the supplier X, since the Kappa has a more streamlined and easier automatable workflow. The competitor requires a speed vac or vacuum concentration uh, concentrator for setting up the hybridization, while Kappa utilizes magnetic beads in this step. Kappa's hybridization and wash kit, called Kappa HyperCapture, is optimized to perform hybridization and wash steps with a single temperature of 55 degrees Celsius and a recommended hybridization duration of 16 to 20 hours. The supplier X has two hybridization and wash kits, the fast kit recommended for 15 to 4 hours hybridization and the regular kit for the standard 16 hours hybridization. Both supplier X kits perform uh, hybridization at higher temperatures than Kappa, which increases evaporation risk and make automation more challenging. And both kits use a different temperature for the washing steps, making the procedure less convenient than ours. In this study, Kappa HyperCapture was used to hybridize libraries for 15 minutes, 1.5 hours, 4 hours, and 16 hours. The Supplier X Fast Kit was used for 15 minutes, 1.5 and, and 4 hours hybridization, and the Supplier X Regular Kit was used for 16 hours hybridization. Libraries were sequenced at 75 base pairs uh, paired end read length and downsampled proportionally to their capture uh, target size. The Kappa HyperCap V3 outperformed the supplier X across several key sequencing metrics. First, let's look at the percent of bases, bases covered uh, above 20x on the left chart and above 30x on the right using 16 hours hybridization. 
the performance of Kappa libraries is equivalent to the supplier X using its regular kit. When we look at data from the shorter protocols, we see that Kappa libraries showed overall higher target coverage than the competitor, despite the supplier X having an optimized kit for 15 minutes to 4 hours hybridization. Here we look at overall sequencing efficiency and library complexity. Using 16 hours hybridization, Kappa HyperCap V3 outperformed the supplier X on percent of on target reads and pre CR duplicates and showed similar fold 80 base penalty. At shorter hybridization times, even though the supplier X with the fast kit showed slightly higher on target rate, the percent of duplicates was overall higher and the fold 80 base penalty was significantly higher than Kappa. It is shown that uh, is known that uh, small uh, improvements in fold 80 can drastically improve the target enrichment efficiency, while improvements on percent of on target width have much lower impact on efficiency. And a higher efficiency is translated in lower sequencing costs. Therefore, we demonstrated that Kappa HyperCap Workflow V3 not only outperformed the supplier X on its recommended 16 hours hybridization time but also generated more efficient, more complex, and more uniform libraries than the competitor using a shorter or single-day target enrichment protocol. In summary, we demonstrated that the Kappa HyperCap Workflow V3 enables a single-day target enrichment protocol without significantly compromising the performance. High-quality sequencing metrics can be obtained with hybridization times as short as 15 minutes, and the customers have the flexibility to adjust the hybridization time for their applications and schedule. Similar results were obtained for libraries prepared with enzymatically or mechanically fragmented DNA. The Kappa HyperCap Workflow V3 outperformed other market-equivalent short hybridization kits according to multiple metrics without the need of a specific kit for a faster protocol. And I'd just like to highlight that although the results of this study are promising, this short hybridization protocol is still in development and has not been completely validated by Roche. Please contact Roche Sequencing and Life Science for more details or to request the following tech note. Thank you for joining us today.